Hi everybody, this is Gregor from Personas and on popular request, here's part two of Hidden Gems in Studio One. Certain features that not a lot of people are aware of yet in Studio One, but that are truly awesome. Check them out. First up here, I want to introduce you to the loop symbol down here in the transport bar that you can actually right click and you're going to find a couple of really interesting options here. For instance, you can enable a play start marker, which is really handy. As soon as I do that, no matter where I go, in my playback position here, it will always jump to the point um, where I've set my play marker. This is extremely handy when you're editing a specific part in your vocals, for instance, that you need to get right and you need to start over all the time from the same point. The next option that you have is loop follow selection. And as soon as you enable that, any event that I select is going to have the loop range set on it. So if that is enabled, you can just start looping a specific section, just click on it. Very powerful, especially in uh, combination with this option, cursor follows edit position. As soon as that's on, not just will the loop range uh, follow your selection, but also the cursor will jump to the beginning of your selection as well. Very handy. The next trick I want to show you is reset window positions, which is an assignable key command in the keyboard shortcuts. So let's go to Studio One, Keyboard Shortcuts, and search for Reset Window Positions. There it is. And I would recommend you to put that on the Enter key or Return key, because that is not even used by Studio One. And then you just click Assign. And why is that useful? Well, when you work on different computers and people have different resolutions and things like that, what can often happen is that you try to open a plugin like so, and you see that the interface of the plugin is actually not entirely visible on your screen. In worst cases, it's actually shifted all the way to here to a point where it becomes difficult to even grab the whole thing, right? So now you have that really handy key command, just hit the enter key once and there it is back in focus. Next up, I want to show you how you can automate better with this hidden gem in Studio One. So as you probably know, there's a couple of ways that you can add automation to your song. For instance, you can touch your parameter, which is how they all start. And then you can either click on this A here to add this automation directly to your track. You can also use the hand symbol up here to drag it to your track or on its own separate track. Or you click on this cogwheel uh, on your plugin that you want to automate and then you drag from here, which is oftentimes a bit faster to do when you're working with a white screen or something like that. But by far the easiest way to do this and the way I would urge you to learn is to use Option and A on a Mac or Alt and A on a Windows PC. Because look how easy it is as soon as you start using this hotkey. So you just select your parameter, you hit Option and A and bam, your automation has been added just like that. See? how quickly I'm going through here and just add a couple more. And as soon as I expand my envelopes down here, you can see they've all been added to my respective track. It couldn't be faster than that. Speaking of automation, there has been a very quiet improvement to the way we can automate in Studio One and it was introduced in version 4.6. So if you have a couple of automations like I have here, for instance, and you want to automate multiple of these at once, it is really easy to do now. So just create your range selection like so and go to the upper half of your event area until you see this bracket tool appear. And now you can just click and drag and notice how I'm actually adjusting all of these automations at once now. Of course, this doesn't just work for volume automation. This also works with any other automation that you can imagine. What happens quite often to me is that I try out different sounds, uh, switch out plugins here and there, find instruments that work and others that don't. So in the end, I end up with a lot of virtual instruments that are not being used. Now, that's not an issue from a performance standpoint, but it makes the song take a lot longer to load. So there's a really easy way to get rid of all of these unused instruments at once. Let me show you. So you just go down here to the mixer and then you open up the instrument rack on the other side here. And now you can just click on this arrow, this drop down arrow next to the green Z mode for software low latency monitoring. And then you just click on remove unused. And as soon as I do that, you see all these virtual instruments that were grayed out, not used by any instrument track in my song are gone. 
So in this song here, I'm working with different drum elements. I have the bass and the guitars. And let's say I want to do a stem export and I want to render out all the drums separately, but the bass and the guitars I want to send out as one track. So a great way to achieve just that is to just simply select all of my guitars and then go right click, event and mix down selection. What this does is it's gonna render all of my selected events, including all of the used insert and sound effects, by the way, into one single stereo file. So now what I can do is just either hide all these tracks or delete them all together. In this case, I'm probably just gonna hide them because perhaps I need them later. And now I'm just gonna rename this really quickly, both the track as well as the event, by just type in the name. So guitars, and now just shift and enter and notice how this changed both the track as well as the event name. So that's another hidden gem for you right there. And now I can just export all these stems. So one extremely quick way to do this is rather than go through the entire export stems menu, just open up your browser, switch to the files tab, and then go to an empty folder. In this case, I'm on my desktop and there's a folder called stems. And now you just select all of these guys and you drag them over here. Now, before I let go, do you notice all these different options that I'm getting? Like WAV file, WAV file with rendered insert effects or audio loop. I can actually step through these options with the shift key. So if I just want the WAV files as they are without taking into account the channel insert effects and such, I take the first option. If I wanna render these insert effects with the audio stems, then I take the second one. Or if I wanna have audio loops to make it compatible for a Studio One sound set, then I choose the audio loops. Now in my case, because we already rendered in the insert effects earlier, I'm obviously gonna go for the first option, just the WAV files. And now you can see that Studio One is rendering all of these out blazing fast. Now, when we look at them, they're actually coming out as 24-bit stereo, but let's assume that we want a different bit depth here. Maybe we want to have 32-bit um, float or 16-bit, and that can actually be changed in the song settings. So I'm just gonna delete all of these really quick. So just go to delete file, yep. And now we go to song, song setup, and the bit resolution that is set here is actually the one that will be used for the browser export also. So if I set 16-bit over here and hit apply, you'll notice that next time I do this, these are not 24-bit anymore. These are now 16-bit, right? And that is really, really cool. One thing you wanna perhaps take into account when you do this is that you go to the Studio One preferences and just make sure that under audio, you have dithering for playback and audio file export activated so that you don't introduce any quantization errors or things like that when you go from 24 to 16-bit.